These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There is a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm or you can just use the link in the info box. By the way, I also offer tutoring via Skype and you can find more information about that Skype tutoring service at my website. Thanks. We can start by thinking about what would happen in this reaction. <coughs> is OS an element? Yes, OS is osmium. Okay. Osmium. I believe the first step of the mechanism looks like this. We've seen a few different mechanisms now where we attack both ends of the alkene at the same time. We saw that in hydroboration when we're attacking both ends of the alkene at the same time. When else did we see that? A couple other examples. With halogenation, with diatomic halogens. So here's another example of attacking both sides at the same time. If we pay close attention to the arrows, we should be able to draw what the product looks like from this step. This is another case where it helps to draw the alkene with wedges and dashes, I think. Well, that would give us this intermediate. There aren't any charges to change because there's no initial tail or final head. We have a cycle of arrows here. Everybody is both gaining and losing electrons. We don't have to change any charges. Now it's the hydrogen peroxide's turn. And apparently what the hydrogen peroxide does is it cuts these bonds and uh, turns these into alcohol groups. We're not going to go over the mechanism for that. There, there must be a protonation step, but we're not going to go through the steps of the mechanism for that. I don't know if they give more details in the textbook. This is going to be kind of like what we did when we did hydroboration and oxidation, where we looked at the first step where the boron attached, but we didn't pay too much attention to when the boron was replaced with an alcohol. Well, by the same token here, we won't go into the details of how we're replacing this osmium tetroxide with two alcohol groups. But we should probably know that. I do not know whether that's a mechanism that you need to know. We could look in the textbook and see if they even covered it. It certainly isn't a high priority.
doesn't give the reagents. I think maybe I got the wrong reagents down though because the reagents. Yeah, the reagents in the hand don't, don't match what's in the textbook. So let's fix that. So yeah, actually sometimes there are some cases where you would use the hydrogen peroxide here, but in the textbook, the main reaction they focus on is the H2S. There's another example where you would use the uh, H2O2. Anyway, this is a two-step process. They don't give the mechanism for what turns these oxygens to alcohol, so we're not going to need to worry about that mechanism. It is good to know the first step over here, and this should remind you of a lot of the other first steps we've seen, except, at least, I don't know if we've seen many three-membered cyclic attacks over here. For example, with the boron, there was only two arrows in the attack, and in the bromonia, uh, in the diatomic halogen, there was only two arrows involved in attacking the alkene. What is the use of this for synthesis? What does this give us? This is what's called dihydroxylation. And that's a very logical name, dihydroxylation, because we're putting on two hydroxy groups. What's another name for the hydroxy functional group? Alcohol. Alcohol. So we could also call it dialcoholation, although that's not an official name. What was the first one called? Dihy what? Dihydroxylation. <laughs> Because another name for alcohol groups is hydroxy groups. The official name for this reaction would be dihydroxylation. That's very logical because we're putting on two hydroxy groups. Is THF H2O2? No. What, what is THF? What's the role of the THF here? Well, because here it's, it uses H2O2. Catalyst. Oh, they did use that in your notes too. Yeah, that's what I used in the handout. H2O2 and then H2O2. H2O2 is hydrogen peroxide. Oh, they, they use the H2O2 yeah. at the same time. Okay, so I guess there's uh, a bunch of different, uh, there's really a bunch of different uh, possibilities here. It says in the, in the textbook, there's a couple of different approaches here. Uh, osmium tetroxide is expensive and highly toxic, so there are different uh, modifications of this approach. So you can just use whichever reagents your instructor used in lecture. But I'm sure anything that's in the textbook would be fine too. So in the textbook, these were the reagents that were used. THF is a common solvent, right? We should know that THF is a common solvent. I think maybe we talked about this yesterday. It's this five-membered cyclic ether. This is a good aprotic solvent. But THF doesn't really play a role in any of our reactions. It's just a solvent. Yeah. So in the textbook, this is the solvent that was used for the reaction. If that's THF? Is that what I think so, yeah. Uh, I that's right. We talked about this a little yesterday as well. This is simply a common aprotic solvent. We talked about how it was aprotic, but we didn't. Yeah. So again, the one key element here is the osmium tetroxide. It looks like there's a couple different other reagents that you can add here to finish off the reaction, either the H2S or the hydrogen peroxide. So any of those variations seems like they're okay. When would you use this for a synthesis? When you want to do a dihydroxylation, when you want to put two alcohol groups on adjacent carbons. Would this be sin or anti? Sin. Sin. How does the mechanism explain why the alcohol groups both end up, both attack from the same side? They're from the same molecule. They're from the same molecule and they're attacking concertedly. We've seen this explanation for a bunch of other reactions, like hydroboration as well. And so, so, somewhat similar to hydrogenation as well. This is the important part of the mechanism to know then because it helps to explain why this is sin. So the key aspect here, for stereochemistry is that we have a sin stereochemistry.